Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Anthony. Today we're going to discuss, discuss multi-sig keys for Bitcoin inheritance planning. Specifically, who should be holding your multi-sig keys? So, if you have a multi-sig, you want to know. You got to think. You should think about who are, who are going to be your key holders. So, multi-sig in general is a great way to reduce risk of theft and, kind of more importantly, catastrophic risk of catastrophic loss because you're reducing or. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I won't say eliminating, but you're reducing your single points of failure. Okay. And um, developer Michael Flaxman does a great job of explaining all this in, in his website, um, Why to Use Multisig, which we'll have a link for in the notes. Oh, great. So, okay, multisig works great while you're alive. But my question is, and what we're going to explore today is, what happens upon your death? Because you'll want to have one or more of your keys held by someone other than you at the moment of your death. And we'll, res- we'll review a couple of good options for who. Does that make sense, Janice? That so is- if you have a two of three yep. multi-sig, real quick, that means you need two of these devices or two of these keys to be able to access the Bitcoin. Right. And during your life, you'll probably have two of them. You'll have one in your purse or whatever and the other in your home office, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that sort of split is what gives you a little bit of security during your life because somebody would have to rob you twice. Right, right. Okay, makes sense? It does. And then you give your third one to your executor, okay? Or your husband or whatever. Sure, yep. But upon your death, your husband has one, but he needs two. Correct. So how do we make sure that upon your death, whoever needs to have two has two? Does that make sense? It does, yep. Because Because you have to have two. It might not be, you know, maybe he doesn't know that it's in your home office desk, or maybe he doesn't know that it's, or or maybe, you know, the the, the circumstances of your death, it's not in your purse anymore, right? Right, You're robbed or whatever, whatever. Right. And the keys could be, they're, they're small, right? They look like a USB drive, so they honestly could be anywhere if you have a junk drawer yep. you might not find it right exactly so here that's the key question here okay make it so far you know during your lifetime you you've set up set it up so that to reduce risk of loss or, ca- or risk of theft or cra- catastrophic loss and by the way let me make sure that that makes sense so if you lose the one in your handbag and you only have the one in your desk then you say hey executor give me that other key i need to reset this because i lost one of my keys that way losing one key is not catastrophic loss Got- Makes sense Absolutely. Cool, 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 cool. As part of that is just explaining it, saying it out loud to help my make sure I understand yeah. it. <laughs> okay, so who should be holding that first? So uh, the, the the conversation today is who should be holding that third key? And we have a couple of good candidates here. Number one, okay. use a Bitcoin custody service. Um, there are companies out there. This is sort of a nascent industry. So there's um you know there's a few there's many out there. There's a, a few established you know quote unquote established players. Meaning they've been around this for a few years, not a few months. Yeah, this is right? real news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so so what are the pros? They have expertise. Um, they will probably not lose your keys. They will probably have excellent uh, operational security practices, and they'll probably be keeping everything up to date. And what does that mean? Um, if you give your key to Joe Schmo, who doesn't know anything about Bitcoin, they might just lose it and not realize right. how important it is. Right. Like you said, you put that in a junk drawer, and you may not find it again. Yeah. Uh, if you give it to Cousin Larry and he doesn't have good operational security practices or OPSEC practices, he might think, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to lose this, so I'm going to write down the seed words right. on, on my computer, which you should kind of never do. <laughs> no. no. Um, or they might not know to keep things up to date. They might have a hardware wallet that you get. They, uh, you might give them a hardware wallet to your cousin. He never updates the firmware for years and years and years, and by the time he plugs it in, it's it's totally vulnerable to an attacker. Correct. Right. But if you work if you work with a professional custodial service, their their job is to be on top of all those things. Um, another benefit of working with a custodial service is they're quote unquote immortal, meaning because they're a company, um, assuming the business survives, they will outlive you. You don't have the risk of, hey, my cousin is actually ten years older than me. What if he dies before I do? Right. Right. And then lastly, uh, custodial services, they're, they're able to help the other key holders. So let's say, um, you know, when you pass away, your, your spouse finds one of your keys, and that's what, what you know, that's needed to, to get this all happening. Yes. Uh, yep. Then the, the custodial services, they have guys who, who know how to coach or consult and teach you. Okay, wait a second. Let me walk you step by step what needs to be done next, right? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Because you could have one of these keys and have no idea. Yep. What to do with it. And not only do are they able to do that, they've done this over and over, so they sort of have the scripts or they have the yep. t- demeanor or temperament to know how to how to help somebody who doesn't know how to do this, how to speak the language of someone who doesn't know how to do this, right? Yep. All right. 
Uh, what are some of the cons of the custodial services? They're, it's a very new industry. It's hard to figure out who's good, who's bad, who knows what they're doing, um, and who's going to survive and who's going to fail, right? Um, they also have very, very limited legal or probate expertise. Uh, they may be able to do security and key, 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 custo- key custody and all those things very well, but they probably don't know much about how the probate process works or who they should be dealing with or whether or not they need to... Uh, respond to a spousal election service right. process, for example. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, so there's that. Um, and then lastly, there's cost. Uh, depending on who you go with, um, they can be pricey-ish or you know, you got, you, only you can decide if it's worth it, right? Right. And, you know, at, at this point, since they're so new, do they have all the rules and regulations in place? Like, let's say if they dissolve, do they have a backup plan? Like, what happens to all the information that they have? That's a great question. So the two the two companies that sort of stand out are CASA and mm-hmm. Unchained, uh, or I guess it's Unchained Capital. And okay. both of those two um, sort of leaders in this area um, have have discussions about what happens if we don't exist because they're very oh, big perfect. on okay. no single points of failure and they don't want themselves to be the single point of failure. So Got they do a good job. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Okay. So that's a, that's Bitcoin custody services. That's a, an excellent um, option for who should be your, one of your key holders. Another option is finding a Bitcoin executor. Uh, what I mean by that is a, an executor, prefer, preferably a professional executor who's very, very uh, familiar with Bitcoin custody, operational security, and so forth. Uh, the pros of finding a Bitcoin executor are that you get that built-in uh, probate and legal expertise so it's not just somebody who who very nerdily understands how to par- hardware while, while it works, but also all the ins and outs of the probate process and the legal sort of possible entanglements and you know what to look out for. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, one one other uh, pro, at, at least compared to the um, custody services, is you have a very highly regulated individual and possibly entity if it's a law firm, and what that means is as a lawyer we are super. Um, aware of ethical rules, fiduciary yes. rules, bar association rules, the court's demands. Like we, we are, we are, um, we have a lot of strings attached to us that make us act right. If that, does that make sense? <laughs> That's probably why in the last section I asked you about the rules and regulations, right? Because we have a plan. Yeah. If heaven forbid you pass, right? There's a plan for other executors. I mean, there's a plan, right? hundred percent. Um, and we fall under a lot of rules. Um, as far as I know, the Bitcoin custodial service industry, if it even qualifies an industry so far, does not have any such regulations. I mean, that's could be a good thing in some senses, but if that, uh, the lack of regulations may give you some discomfort if you're choosing and somebody to hold the key, right? Self-regulated, yeah, it could, right? So, what are the cons of having a Bitcoin of executor, uh, which is usually going to be an individual? Well, number one, it's really hard to find one. It's really hard to find a professional executor in general, which we've learned over the past few years. Um, every time we get a call uh, uh, for somebody who wants to name me as their executor, they're like, oh my goodness, I've been looking for someone like you for months and I, I finally okay. found you. And so I was like, okay, I'm glad we found each other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I personally didn't even know they were really out there until we started working together years ago, right? It, it, they're just not that common or talk and, about that. And you can attest to the folks who call in have been like really, really like looking for something like us. Yeah, yeah. they have, yep. So now, so 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 now you have to find that needle, let's, let's needle in a haystack of a, a good professional executor, and of those needles in a haystack, yeah. you have to find one who understands Bitcoin, who understands you know how to custody your 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 keys, seed phrases, and so forth, how to have good opsec, and um and how to keep up to date. Um, you know, well, just because somebody learned what a ledger is five years right. ago doesn't quite mean that they know what's going on now. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, this is basically me saying I, I can do this, but <laughs> um, I, I am actually, you know, I, I don't want to be a single point of failure to anybody either. So I'm really hopeful that there are other executors or um, individuals uh, who do what we do, who are also similarly interested in Bitcoin. And please contact us. Let's, please, let's, yes. yep. let's, uh, let's get to know each other and make sure that, um, that folks know there's more than one of us because we don't want to have any single point of failure, as we talked about. Yeah. So if we are having trouble finding someone with that niche. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably going to be nigh impossible for uh, yeah, for yeah. the user. But that's how you get started, right? I'll I'll, I'll sort of carry the flag in the beginning, and then hopefully, yeah. uh, other attorneys or um or other custody services will learn about probate more and enough to, you know, fill that fill that gap. 
Exactly. So the last option is family or friends. That's a sort of obvious one, but there's, you know, there's some pros and cons there. Uh, the, the main pro is it's somebody who you're comfortable with and trust. You know, it's probably maybe who you would want to, um, you know, who, who's your heir, who's going to inherit, sure. or maybe you have a good friend who does, who knows crypto or Bitcoin as well as you do. Right. So that's your, 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 your Bitcoin buddy who you learned with all along. Exactly. Maybe, maybe that's your yep. candidate. Um, but the cons are, you know, if it's your best friend who doesn't know anything about Bitcoin, I mean, same issues as before. Are they going to mess up the key management? Are they going to write down the seeds and store it on Dropbox? <laughs> or you know, just are they going to lose it? Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. But then again, on the flip side, if you have a buddy who really is into Bitcoin, maybe it's your pal who brought you in and knows even more than you. But do they know anything about probate? Do they know any? Do they want the headaches and responsibilities of making sure that upon your passing, um, that they hold one of the keys to transfer to the appropriate heir? You know, after the IRS creditors and everything has been dealt with, that's a bit of a headache. I mean, there's a reason why people don't want to be executors in general, let right. alone a <laughs> Bitcoin executor. Right, right. That's a whole nother level of fun. Yeah. So even if you have, you know, one of the most famous, one of your pals is one of the most famous, knowledgeable Bitcoin security experts, they might not want to be your Bitcoin executor. Correct. Because like we've, we've talked about at length, how, that what's involved of being an executor. Yeah. So I think that's it. Hopefully, um, you know, we, this one was, I treated this as a slightly more advanced topic and I kind of powered through that. So um, I don't know. Let me know how that how that feels and if that's a, a right uh, tone to set for these conversations. Absolutely. And I think we still have our Bitcoin tipping link down there, right? That's right. Um, if you like these topics and want to encourage us to do more and to do some research, leave uh, – I, I don't know how that works. I, I, what, am I saying it right? Like a couple of uh, – Say sats. Okay, sure. Those. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> you, you just made that word up. <laughs> I'm like I have no idea. But yes, just uh, – encourage us to keep going and learning more so i can learn along with you yeah. right yeah i mean and the way it works is uh it, it, i think it's a lightning lightning donation link so you can leave fractions of cents just to let us know you're That's out there and that, okay um, fractions encourage. of cents yeah. got it okay okay well, well i love talking about these topics i hope uh, let us know if you're enjoying listening to them if you have any questions let us know we'll we'll work on it and uh thanks everyone again for listening thanks janice as always take care